Yeah, that would be great to get them. Great, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Um, all right, so, well, let's get started here, you guys. My name's Norma Jean. For those of you who are new here, this is Life Force Canada's education think tank. Uh, speaking of Life Force Canada, we're more than just education. Our mission is to protect our freedom and rights. And we are a platform that's made up of Canadians from across this great nation who volunteer their time and energy to create the Canadian Restoration Plan, which is an empowered future for all of us. So we have nine pillars in Life Force Canada. Education is just one of them, but I am predictable. I always say that ultimately, I believe that education long-term is the most important pillar because <clears throat> everything else in life does come back to how we educate and raise our children. So to give you an idea of who I am and why I'm so passionate about education, uh, until I retired this past summer, I know I look far too young to have retired, um, I worked in the public education system for nearly 20 years as an education assistant, supporting kids with special needs. And I'm also a private behavior interventionist for children with autism and an Orton-Gillingham reading and spelling specialist. But I think most importantly, I, I'm also the mom of two, two grown young men who both had learning challenges and they struggled to be successful in the, in the current school system. So I've seen the education system through the eyes of both a mom and as an educator, and I understand how the current model can be lacking and perhaps even broken. And certainly we can all agree that it's not serving a lot of our children. So I think we realize that uh, that it's long overdue for us to move away from this outdated one-size-fits-all model and then it's and that's why we created the education think tank it's here to support all of us so whether you're a parent a teacher administrator support staff or just simply someone who cares about the future of our children the future of humanity we need a new vision and it's the recognition of this that brings us all here each week and I really thank you all uh, for being here with me tonight and coming back week after week and I actually think we have a couple of new faces um, and it would be really great if you could tell us uh, where you're from and what brought you here tonight how you heard about us and uh, what brought you to the education think tank so Shelly I don't think you've been here before have you yeah Shelly Orlando have you have you been here before I, no this is my first think tank oh yay I'm glad yeah. you chose us. Thank you. Well, yeah, yeah, I appreciate how you laid it out there for me <laughs> <laughs> to just be able to choose it so quickly and easily. Uh, so I'm from uh, Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, of course. And uh, I, I can't remember exactly the links that linked me to here eventually, but as soon as I saw it and what it stood for and the pillars, and I agree with you, like education for me is the most important. Um, I'm a grandmother of two little ones and I have four children of my own, three are adults. And then my husband and I had a, a fourth now. So just re-educating these children uh, like you, I've seen what the education system did. And last year we pulled our little one out, 12 years old, and the two grandchildren. Um, and it's just so important for me for them to get re-educated in, in this new way of being in the world. And, you know, I know for myself, I came into it so late, uh, but for them, it's just like a whole new possibility of living in freedom and peace and, you know, a different way of seeing relationships. So, um, and from the side of being an educator, I've, uh, developed uh, like personally uh, programs for little ones and then teenagers and then adults and then at the University of Toronto, um, which I left because they're all on board with the other narrative. So I'm like, oh, dear, dear, I can't teach with integrity, you know? Mm. So, uh, so I, I just uh, focused on my uh, personal practice and, um, and also because I pulled my 12 year old out it's like, how do we educate? Like, what do I do with her? She's a brilliant child and, and I couldn't see her online. And so we've done a few things, but I would just like to see like at the local level, a system for the two littlest ones. I don't know if you've heard of Roots and Wings. No. 
so they do little learning pods, little six kids. So I've uh, um, offered my home as a little safe place for these six little families to have their children come and learn with my grandchildren. And we just hired a teacher privately with all this mindset. But now for the 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds, it's a little harder to put those pods together because people come from everywhere. So that's why I'm here just to see like perhaps how do we, where do we start to re-educate them as a group so they're still socialized and not so separated right now with as, as everything's falling apart, you know, it, as I feel like for her, we're just putting something together for them. And I don't know if there's something in place. I don't want to reinvent the wheel if it's, if it's there's something there. Uh, but I do want to be a part of it. Absolutely. Well, so, we are very happy to be here. It's all new. It's all new for all of us, really, isn't it? Yeah. It doesn't matter where we're coming from. Uh, this is this is a, a step in a new direction, pretty much for all of us, in some form or another. Um, lots of people have been developing it for a while, but um, I mean, I think I think the challenge is going to be that the age of your daughter, really, isn't it? Because they're kind of already entrenched with their friends, and you know, did you meet resistance when you when you um, withdrew her from the public school system, or was she on board? Oh, oh I, I didn't quite catch what you asked because I couldn't. It was coming. Yeah, Norma Jean, you were breaking up real bad. So I didn't catch your question. Sorry. Uh, I just, I asked if she, if your daughter, um, if you met any resistance with pulling her out of the, of the public school system. Um, no, I wrote a letter. I knew from, from my side that I could, I did a little research. I pulled off the website, the letter to send them. And I actually talked uh, with the principal. So it, it all depends on the, on the, the principal and your principal of the school so um he understood my position so i was one letter and it was done but your daughter was she um was she on board too um well at first uh she did online learning and she's um a highly intelligent chat she's in like the 99.9 .9 percentile so to see her go from thrive like what we figured was thriving right and being which now I just see, oh gosh, that wasn't true education, right? Uh, so she was online and I, could, I couldn't see, she was um, seeing for herself, it was busy work. So mm -hmm. she was losing her motivation. This is a highly intelligent child. And I was like, we can't, we can't let this happen. So I just pulled her right out this year and then found the interest. We kept her in the music. She's into robotics. So we found a two-year program there. Um, but not everybody can do that. So what I liked about this think tank is how do we make that accessible to everybody? Not like I know when she was in regular school, like she got to go on the mindfulness trips and all these special things. And I was like, every kid should be doing that. Why are they just doing that for kids? certain kids so even though she was doing that it bothered me so much because it didn't if for me it wasn't about intellect it was about wow every kid would find that fascinating what she was doing so so that's something I wanted to bring to the table whatever is gonna manifest from this like just letting it be accessible and inclusive and um yeah well, that's our hope as well. That's our that's our yeah. vision. That's our vision. Yeah. Not our hope. Hope is everyone yeah. thinks hope is a positive vibration. I yeah. actually think it's not because it leaves room for doubt. So yeah. So she's thought. a little lost in a way, right? Just because what am I doing? Like you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, we're gonna get there. We're gonna. Yeah. There. Yeah. I well, try my like best to explain it. And, and she'll, figure, she'll start figuring some of it out on her own too, won't she? Right? As, as, she as she will, asking. yeah. And and we welcome lots of questions from her and stuff. And um, 
uh, I think she's kind of crossed that bridge where I don't know that I want to go back, mm-hmm. but she doesn't know really what she's going moving into yet. Yeah, so. exactly. None of, none of us do really do. We, we? don't know. <laughs> so I'm so grateful to be here with everyone and just share. Well, we're very happy to have we're very happy to have you, Shelley. Thanks. We'll all be able to work together really well. Um, let me see, Jude, Judy, you're I think you're a new face tonight, are you not? Have you yes. been here before? I am. I'm Grace's friend. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> Um, so I, uh, love education. Um, I, and legacy is huge for me. Um, I did homeschool a couple of years. I have four children, but I only homeschooled one each time. And it was first, first of all, it was because of bullying. Um, but also I'm glad I did because my son was highly, um, uh, he was very, I think school was stifling him actually, because the amount that I taught him in uh, that first year, and then he wanted to go back to school. But anyway, um, yeah, I love homeschooling. I'm actually really excited about, I don't have grandchildren yet, but I'm already preparing to homeschool. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you you don't look old enough to have grandkids yet. (laughs) I'm probably older than you, I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking not. <laughs> but, so you're in Whitehorse as well? White Court. White Court. I'm sorry. That's what I meant. That's okay. Well, welcome. We're happy to have you. And we're always happy to have someone with some insight on homeschooling. So that's awesome. I uh, also worked with social services with autistic children and, and the disabilities as well. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you very much for joining us. We're happy to have you. Um, Do we have anybody else that's new? No, I didn't didn't think so. I think everybody else has been here before. Um, If you wanted to uh, ask a question or whatever down at the bottom in the reactions, there's um, a button where you can raise your hand. We just kind of find that that's sort of the most efficient way Um, as we're moving through the evening to just sort of make sure that everyone gets an opportunity to speak. So um, tonight, James has kindly agreed to run our feature topic. And for those of you who are new to our think tank, James is a published author and the founder of Ahead of the Curve Wellness. And he's developed a holistic education model that looks at the individual as a whole. And he's going to be sharing some information with us tonight. So we're really excited that you were, um, that you agreed to do that. So thank you, James. I think you can, do you need to share? Yeah, you should be able to share your screen. Perfect, you, okay. If you need to. Yeah, I do. Stand Great. by. Hello. All right, can everybody see the PowerPoint here? Yes. Excellent, very good, okay, so again, um, honored to be here, and uh, I created what's called the Proactive Wellness. Ten years, I've been working with both. Um, oh, individ- can you hear everybody? Hear me? Oh, oh, hold on a second. You're cutting out a little bit. Okay. How about now? Is this okay? Seems to be. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Hold on a second. Just gonna go back here. Okay. Yeah. So for for the past over ten years, I've actually been uh, working with both individuals privately and employees in the workplace uh, to help them to expand the power of their perception, slow down aging, increase energy, strengthen immunity, all naturally, of course, and improve overall quality of life. And throughout uh, my years, I've worked with a handful of children to help them to increase their confidence, to improve the grades in school, and just overall embrace their natural creative abilities. And um, I ended up creating the proactive wellness education system because I helped a lot of people where psychologists, psychiatrists, psychotherapists, like didn't know what to do with people because they often, I'm not putting a whole blanket statement, but they often use a very reactive approach where I take a proactive approach. So what I'm going to be sharing today is um, the, some elements of my proactive wellness education system as it can relate to parents and uh, some new subjects and applications of teaching in regards to homeschooling as well. So in this presentation, I'll be covering the following. 
deep breathing for children, which is a very important but underestimated exercise anybody can practice regardless of their age. Uh, Qigong for children as well. So I have a background in Shaolin Kung Fu. And for uh, people who aren't aware, uh, the yin, it, most people have heard of yin and yang. So yin is the uh, feminine sister Qigong and yang is the masculine brother Kung Fu. So put them together, that's when you have the whole system. So I was uh, trained by my Qigong was teaching came from a master's from the Sports University of Beijing. Uh, they came back in 2009. But I also had a little bit of Qigong training when I had a personal Shaolin Kung Fu training as well, which was one of the best pieces of education that I received. So we're going to be talking a little bit about Qigong for children and hypnosis because my first certification outside the box um, is uh, was hypnosis. So Ontario Hypnosis Center School, I graduated from there in December of 2006. So I'm going to be talking about hypnosis as a means to help children to learn faster because there's ways to uh, conventional and then there's holistic. Hypnosis falls under the holistic ways in which a teacher can help a student to learn any given subject, but at a faster rate. So their memories, uh, they can recall it much easier when it's time to recall that information. So let's talk about deep breathing for children. So regardless of our calendar age, deep breathing is the most important but underestimated exercise anybody can practice on a daily basis. So for me, I practice three times a day uh, before I get out of bed, when I'm driving, and uh, shortly before I go to sleep at night. And again, no matter what shape our body is in, we all can practice some form of deep breathing. Now, there are a multitude of benefits of deep breathing and various different styles of deep breathing patterns. So just to go over the general benefits, deep breathing slows down cellular and cognitive aging. So for people who don't know, and I wrote about this in my book, we have three different ages. We have the calendar age, we have cellular age, and we have the cognitive age. The calendar age is just a number on the wall, and it's the one that we do not need to put much emphasis on. A lot of people identify with their calendar age, and I do encourage people to no longer do that and start connecting with their cellular and cognitive ages because cellular and cognitive ages can be slowed down, but they can even be reversed under certain circumstances. And that's a long conversation for another time. But that's one of the benefits. It also increases energy levels as well. And even for children who might be hyperactive, deep breathing can actually balance out their energy level as well, because you can have too much and you can have too little. And it's about creating equilibrium of energy in the body. And it also strengthens immunity because deep breathing uh, increases our oxygen intake. And as a result, the more oxygen we can bring into our body, the overall, our immune system is more strong and more balanced compared to people who do not practice deep breathing. And then there's obviously strengthening of the lungs. And I'm going to be showing you a very interesting video on Qigong breathing. And um, I'm going to be guiding everybody through a Qigong breathing pattern. Um, after I talk about deep breathing, so you can begin to experience the deep breathing that I've taught my clients, and I've been getting incredible feedback on, especially in regards to releasing trapped emotional energy in the body. Deep breathing also helps improve focus and concentration, especially my forms of deep breathing, because it requires you to tune into the sound of my voice where I do the counting and you do the breathing. So when children are guided with these breathing patterns, they're forced to focus on concentrate on one thing, which is ensuring their breathing coincides with the counting. So it is an indirect way to help them to improve their focus and concentration. And it also increases body awareness and is a proactive way to communicate with the body's intelligence. So I often talk about how our body has an intelligence that we communicate with either consciously or unconsciously. We've been programmed in society to be victims to our bodies and to broadcast the energies of worry and doubt in our bodies, which according to psychoneuroimmunology and psychoneuroendocrinology, it compromises the body's immune system when we hold on to worry and trap emotional energy in our body. So it's important and valuable that we communicate with our body's intelligence on a conscious level of awareness. And then it also strengthens one's ability to regulate and release emotional energy. So I've worked with quite a few people over the years who had perceived anxiety, panic attacks. And I said, you got to delete those words from your vocabulary because it's all about learning to regulate and release your emotional energy. And just like a muscle becomes stronger every time it lifts weights, you develop that ability as well as time goes on. And deep breathing is one of the most important exercises to release emotional energy. Let it be your own. Let it be the stuff you absorb 
absorbed from someone else's, hence the uh, picture that's there. Now, uh, everybody who I've asked, I said, you ever notice that moods can be contagious? Nobody has ever said no. Everybody has said yes, or some people say a swear word, and then they say yeah after that, because it's a oh yeah, or whatever, because they realize moods and emotional energy is highly contagious. And just because we can't see it, doesn't mean it's not there. I mean, we can't see Wi-Fi and cell phone signals, but we have service. So just because our eyes can't see something doesn't mean it's not there. So there are various styles of deep breathing. So, you know, to the right there, there's a yoga style. Uh, to the left, you know, standard diaphragmatic, where you're holding to your chest in your, uh, chest in your stomach. And then some of you might recognize Wim Hof in the middle there as well. He is uh, a man who developed the ability to like climb mountains in boxer shorts, like in sub-zero temperatures. Deep breathing was one of the reasons on how he was able to go about creating that, which we all have the ability to. My teach, what the deep breathing that I teach is different because I call it a, a proactive deep breathing. So again, there's traditional deep diaphragmatic breathing, yoga forms of breathing, and there's Tibetan yoga breathing. There's many different styles, Wim Hof, and then there's Qigong breathing. And that's the one that I teach my clients and anybody that I work with. So, and there's a lot more than that, by the way, those are just the top four that came to my conscious awareness. So proactive wellness, deep breathing, that's my brand, proactive wellness and deep breathing. So this form of deep breathing is what I have been educating my clients on over the years with a lot of positive feedback. And I shared a deep breathing audio with uh, Plan Council Ontario and a woman uh, who had a grandson. And she said this to me two days ago, and she said her grandson had struggled with perceived depression and she sent him various tools over the years and nothing really phased him. And he got back to her and said, you know, the breathing audio that you sent me, it's actually helping me as well. So they're helping a lot of people when sometimes other tools just simply aren't enough to break through those layers of emotional energy. So it involves counting and breathing. The pattern consists of 15 breaths. So the first five breaths, you inhale for the count of four. And then you, you inhale through the nose and send your breath down to your stomach. You feel your stomach expanding out. You pause for the count of one, and then you exhale for the count of six. Again, I do the counting, you do the breathing. And then the second five breaths, you inhale for the count of four, and then hold for various times. Like my beginner audios, you hold for four, then you work your way up to six, and then you can work your way up to eight, 10, and 12. When one audio feels too easy, you work your way up to the next one to build your lungs, the capacity and the strength of your lungs. So it is designed uh, to be accumulative. So one, again, you're designed to build the lungs and build the strength and capacity of the lungs as well. And then you exhale for the count of six. And then the last five breaths are just like the first five where you inhale for the count of four, pause for the count of one, and then exhale for the count of six. So initially, years ago, I just got people to do inhale for four, hold for eight, exhale for six, 10 times. And people said, no, it's really good. I enjoy it. Then I had this thought, what if I did five intro breaths and then five uh, outro breaths where there's no holding? So you work your way up to the hold and then you come down and then... Uh, People said, I love that one even more than just doing the standard 486. So, uh, so this pattern lasts anywhere from four to five minutes, depending upon how long your holds are. My personal practice is I haven't really shared it with many other people. Um, it's I inhale for seven and then exhale for eight. And then the next five breaths, I inhale for seven, hold for 16, then I exhale for eight. And then the last five are like the first five. And I recorded my own voice because I don't want to count. I want to hear James talk while I'm in the moment and I count as well. So I made my own audio just for me that I do utilize. And you can do it with your eyes open. You can do it with your eyes closed. When you do it with your eyes closed, you do get the benefits of meditation in conjunction with deep breathing. When I do it when I'm driving, obviously I'm not doing it with my eyes closed because I do not drive a Tesla with an autopilot function. So I do it with my eyes open. And uh, so that, those are my breathing patterns. Now, I just want to show you a video of a woman who regenerated her lungs with similar breathing as to what I teach people as well. And this woman was a slave to an oxygen tank. And through an eight-week Chinese breathing program, Qigong breathing, she fully regenerated her lungs and got off. So I'm just going to share this two-minute video. And uh, afterwards, I'll guide everybody through a, a intermediate guided breathing. We'll be holding our breath for the, the count of eight. So listen to this, everybody. But probably the most dramatic story I've heard from any of yes. Chun Yi Lin's yes. Qigong students yes. Yes. is that of Esther Trejo. Qigong. In 1987, Esther contracted a rare lung disease. 
She had to be connected to oxygen 24 hours a day to yeah. survive. When I would switch one empty tank to the other, and that only took like a couple seconds, I'd be gasping for air. I'm honest. Ultimately, Esther's doctor told her the only hope was surgery, a lung transplant. She refused. Then in January of 1993, Esther's son heard about Chuni. Sorry about that. And something called Chinese breathing, or Qigong. She didn't want to go. She was sure it would not work. Well, finally he convinced me to go, and I went. Uh, I didn't go willingly, believe me. I took a class of Chinese breathing for eight weeks. At the end of the eight weeks, I didn't need all the oxygen that I had been maintaining to, to survive. In just eight weeks? In eight weeks. No medicine? No medicine, just Chinese breathing. This no. Chinese breathing, was that Qigong? Yes, yes, Qigong. So, uh... What did you it, think? <laughs> what did I think? I was walking on air, you know. Walking on air and walking without oxygen. She hasn't needed it now for four years. And more than that, Esther says Qigong not only gave her back her health, it changed her life. I think I was a crabby, can I say the word? Crabby S-O-B? <laughs> you can use the letters. <laughs> You're not now. No, no. And it's through Qigong. You think it could make a difference for me? Oh, it would make a difference for anyone. So breathing can regenerate the body, especially the lungs, and under certain circumstances. So notice that um, she uh, said it improved her mood and generally, in my language, emotional energy because she was able to release layers of emotional energy that was trapped in her body. So it's a really great testimonial. And I've actually worked with a woman as well who uh, had a, a lung issue and she started to regenerate her lungs as well. And she was in her 70s. So what I want to do before I start talking about Qigong, I do want to guide everybody through a uh, four-ish minute uh, breathing pattern. So you'll be inhaling for four and holding for eight. So on the, I'm going to say inhale for four, three, two, one. I'm going to say it slower and then pause, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then on the sixth breath, I'm going to say inhale for four, three, two, one, hold it eight, seven. And then I'm going to count down. And then the last five will be like the first five. So just for, so everybody can experience this particular type of breathing, because if children learn this, their overall quality of life will be very high as well. So if you want to participate, by all means, if you just want to observe, you can observe as well. <clears throat> so it's best if you sat with both feet flat on the floor. And if you want to close your eyes, by all means, do that. And if you want to keep them open, you can do that too. So first, so remember, inhale through the nose, and then you're going to exhale slowly through the mouth like this. Now, the reason why, when you make the little hole with your mouth, you can easily drag out and exhale for the count of six instead of blowing it all out within two or three seconds. So that's logic. Inhale through the nose, out through the mouth. Okay, first, let's take a deep inhale. Inhale through the nose. Exhale. Let's begin. Inhale, four, three, two, one. Pause. Exhale, six, five, four. Three, two, one, pause. Inhale, four, three, two, one, pause. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, pause. Inhale, four, three, two, one, pause. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, pause. Inhale, four, three, two, one, pause. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, pause. Inhale, four, three, two, one, pause. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, pause. Inhale, four, three, two, one, hold it, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, pause, inhale, four, three, 
two, one, hold eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, exhale six, five, four, three, two, one, pause, inhale, four, three, two, one, hold eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, pause, inhale, four, three, two, one, hold, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, pause, inhale, four, three, two, one, hold, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, pause, inhale, four, three, two, one, pause, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, pause, inhale, four, three, two, one, pause, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, pause, inhale, four, three, two, one, pause, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, pause, inhale, four, three, two, one, pause, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, pause, inhale, four, three, two, one, pause, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, done. <clears throat> okay. I know you might not want to, but please open your eyes and come back. So there's a high probability you're feeling a little lighter, um, like you've released some energy from your body. And that's exactly what happened as well. So what I'm going to be offering to the educational portal for parents who are looking to homeschool their children, a course in deep breathing for the parent and some audios that they can use with their children as breathing breaks. So my audios have, uh, you can choose ocean waves in the background, flowing water in the background, birds chirping in the background, crickets chirping in the background and wind blowing through trees to simulate some nature sound effects because nature is very beneficial for us. And the next best thing to nature is having simulated nature as well. So I'm gonna be making that available complimentary to parents because I know it'll make their lives so much easier when they're working with their children stop and do breathing breaks and their children come back to the moment and they can calm down as well so they can focus too so that's a little bit about deep breathing and uh, we'll move on from that subject and we'll I'll address uh, some questions uh, afterwards in all the comments as well <clears throat> so you have qigong so the left is a picture of people doing qigong in a field and to the right is me uh, doing some qigong uh, so Qigong is slow, fluid body movements combined with regulated deep breathing, visualization, and intention. So if, uh, there's two different types of exercise. There's conventional and holistic. So Qigong, yoga, Tai Chi are fall in the holistic category. Why? Because deep breathing or conscious breathing is a major uh, component of it. And those three, they work your body as a whole, where conventional body movement, you know, you go work your biceps, triceps, and you work your back, then your legs. Well, these ones work your body as a whole, so that um, you and your lungs at the same time. So that's why it's very, very valuable compared to conventional body movement where breathing is not a priority and you work your body in divided parts as opposed to the work in the body as a whole. So it's uh, regulated deep breathing, sometimes visualization, you close your eyes and imagine energy flowing through your body and intention. So why is intention there? Well, why do you do it? Oh, not because someone said it's good for me, because I'm doing it to slow down my aging, increase my energy, strengthening my immunity and tune in with my body's intelligence. And, oh, by the way, the chi, chi kung, if anybody's ever had acupuncture before, acupuncture works on the meridian system of the body. So it can help to release energy blockages of chi or bioelectricity flowing through the meridian system in the body. Chi kung is a more general do-it-yourselfer to increase the flow of chi uh, throughout your body. 
So what are some of the awesome benefits of Qigong? As I mentioned, slowing down aging, increasing bioenergy, otherwise known as life force energy, strengthens immunity and accelerates healing and regeneration. So anybody who practices Qigong on a regular basis, your body will heal faster to some degree compared to someone who doesn't practice Qigong. Uh, it increases overall body awareness. And so many people are looking at their, they're tuned into the outside world and they're not in tune with their body. So Qigong can help you to become more in tune with your body and the messages it's trying to tell you. And it helps to regulate and release emotional energy, just like deep breathing, but in a different way. And it can help to improve focus and concentration. So when I've been teaching this to people, and I do have a, a YouTube video, a training video and a follow-up video afterwards, people have said when they, uh, learn my Qigong, they're so in the moment and so focused because you have to use your legs, your core, your upper body and your lungs all at the same time. And it really zones them into the moment as well. So those are available on YouTube if you ever want to check them out. Um, now, uh, hypnosis to help accelerate learning. So there's a cartoon child lying down there. Now, um, this, some people may have seen this before, this iceberg. So I call this the iceberg of perception. So you have external perception and internal perception. Some of you might be uh, aware of this as the conscious and the subconscious. So I did go to school for hypnosis, as I mentioned, and great education, by the way, to encourage everybody to learn about it. So the <clears throat> notice at the bottom of the iceberg, it's a much bigger chunk compared to the uh, upper part that's visible. So our internal perception represents subconscious, and that is the engine that drives our life. And external perception is the steering wheel that steers the direction of our life. Often, some people, to varying degrees, have disconnects between the two. So using hypnosis, you're actually connecting to the world of internal perception or the subconscious to recreate the link to external perception and internal perception. So they work together, work as a team, work as one. So I'll give you a quick example. Um, I worked with a handful of people over the years who to stop smoking with hypnosis. And that's one of the things hypnosis is known to help. And I worked with this woman at like age 75. She smoked for 60 years. She was smoking up until the day she came to see me. She was so committed to the habit that she was still smoking inside of her house. And that's not that common these days. So um, I, I told her, I said, well, can you imagine life without smoking cigarettes? She said, well, actually, no. And I said, yeah, most people can't. So I began to work with her on how to imagine her life after cigarettes. And then in hypnosis, I sealed the deal, tell her exactly what she needed to hear on that deep unconscious level. And she stopped smoking. And for a week, she was thinking about it, but didn't feel it. And then after that week, she just disappeared. And her whole family thought it was a miracle. And I was even told in hypnosis school, it doesn't work on seniors. Well, I pretty much, you know, destroyed that belief as well. So a lot of great things can happen with hypnosis, but let's go a little bit about it here. So hypnosis is a level of awareness that's parallel to deep meditation. During hypnosis and meditation, the brain waves are down in the alpha and theta level. So let's talk a little bit about uh, brain waves. Marianne, your cat is really cute, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, so um, the human brain generates measurable electrical waves. So the there are four main brain wave ranges in that and within a 24 hour period. It's beta, alpha, theta, and delta. Beta brain waves have a measurement between 15 and 40 cycles per second, and cycles can also be labeled as electrical impulses. And the man who discovered these was a man by the name of Jose Silva. And he developed the, the Silva uh, Ultra Mind system as well. He's a great um, contributor to the world of, of personal development. So he measured this. So beta brain, uh, beta brain waves, 15 to 40 cycles per second. Now, this is the level of the brain waves involved in taking action, engaging in conversation, and which has a high level of awareness of the outside world. And society as a whole is conditioned to stay in beta pretty much the whole day by being programmed to worry about tomorrow, feel guilt about yesterday, and forget about now. So that's the general programming I've noticed in society. And the next is the alpha brain waves. And these have a measurement between nine and 14 cycles or electrical impulses per second. So this level of brain waves correlates uh, with just completing a task and sitting down to rest, finding yourself staring 
uh, without conscious thought. So you're like staring off in the space. That's uh, alpha. Closing your eyes and daydreaming. Closing your eyes and working with your imagination. And even listening to certain types of music or watching movie or a show. Or a more potent example is the people watching the news and actually believing what they're saying. So that's a form of hypnosis there as well. So just staring at the screen and just absorbing it as well. So that's uh, alpha brain waves. And oh, this level of brain waves also correlates with light level of meditation where the thinking process is slower. And lastly, if you're participating in an activity that you really enjoy, that you have a very high level of skill in, chances are you are operating out of the alpha brainwaves. So those who play professional sports are often operating of alpha brainwaves because they're, even though they're moving at very high speeds, they're so, their level of skill is so high that they're flowing and that they're just in the moment as well, just to help you to understand a little bit about alpha there. And then things get really interesting with theta brainwaves, and they have a measurement of five to eight cycles or electrical impulses per second. The level, this level of brainwave has two different levels to be aware of. The upper level of theta correlates with deep meditation, hypnosis, and a very deep level of relaxation. The lower level of theta brainwaves correlates with dreaming while we sleep at night. So, and this is the level of the brainwaves required to consciously access and communicate with the body's intelligence. And I do talk about that in great detail in my education system about the placebo effect 2.0, that our body is intelligent, that we communicate with consciously or unconsciously. That's the conversation for another time. And then delta brainwaves have a measurement of about 0.5 to 4 cycles per second. This is when we sleep at night and we're not dreaming. And in, when we're in the delta brainwave level, the body is in process of recharging and regeneration. So sometimes people wake up after seven or eight hours of sleep at night and they feel really tired, but they remember a lot of their dreams. The reason why is their brain waves were more in theta and less in delta and their body didn't get enough proper sleep. So I've worked with people in hypnosis by the way, to make that switch. So they dream less and, and they're more in Delta and they get better sleep. And I've helped quite a few people to do that as well. So, and this is because while they were sleeping again, they did not experience enough Delta brain waves. So, and their body did not recharge and regenerate properly as well. So I remember the odd occasional dream, but most I do not. And I sleep very, very deeply as well. So, um, and I learned about that in a traditional Chinese medicine, by the way, where a Chinese doctor told me that we're not supposed to remember our dreams because it doesn't help us to get into the deeper levels of sleep as well. So I correlated that with the brain waves as well. So, uh, well, we all dream at night. Um, we are asleep. Our brain waves do move up and down, of course, throughout when we sleep. And overall, it's best to have uh, for overall energy levels to be more in delta brain waves and less theta when we're sleeping at night. So that's just a little bit about hypnosis and the brain waves to give you an understanding of that. So now moving into hypnosis to accelerate learning. So 10 minutes prior to finishing a lesson or a subject, uh, hypnosis can be utilized by a teacher of any given subject to reinforce the general points of the given lesson. So this would result in a higher probability of the student remembering the lesson when it's time to remember it. So I'll give you an example. So a teacher can get uh, children to lie on the floor, uh, like in Shavasana, maybe on yoga mats, or even just put their head on their desk and they do a bit of a, a, a countdown, a bit of a relaxation. Then they reinforce the main points of the lesson. And then it goes from the uh, conscious to the subconscious or from the brain to the heart. So the probability of them remembering it when the time comes is a lot easier. So hypnosis really in some ways is working smart where without it could be viewed as working hard. And hypnosis can also be utilized by a teacher to also improve overall confidence and creativity with their students. So imagine at the end of the day or at the beginning at the end of um, you know, your uh, teaching, you give uh, suggestions to the children that you're very powerful creators, you have an excellent memory, your confidence continues to grow every day in every way in every area of your life. You have the power to create anything you want as long as you set your heart and your brain in that direction. So. Um, I noticed that in elementary school and even high school, some teachers uh, almost did the opposite where they would degrade the children in front of the whole class. And then that would cause the child to uh, feel very uncomfortable when speaking in public. And that's often where uh, people develop a fear or a high level discomfort in speaking in public because they were ridiculed by a teacher one time in maybe an elementary school and it hit them so hard it got to the subconscious immediately. And just like a, like a program, the subconscious works 
with uh, the moment of now. It doesn't go by linear time. So something can be stuck in the subconscious until it's consciously released. So you can have a program operating in there for 40 years and you don't know based upon a trauma or something that happened and it can be released, but only under certain circumstances as well. So hypnosis, again, can be used as a tool for teachers. And I know exactly how to educate teachers to go about doing this as well. So, and I did talk to um, like Simon from the Evergreen uh, Leadership Academy. He's very interested about applying some of what I uh, shared into his teachings as well, just to take the quality of teaching to the next level as well. So you have breathing, deep breathing for children, which great for physical education, holistic physical education. You have Qigong for holistic physical education, and it's very, very simple and easy for children to learn. And then of course you have hypnosis as a tool that you can help to accelerate learning, but in some ways, and it's almost as more important, is to a tool to help them to increase their confidence and creativity and really believe in themselves as the powerful creators they were born and put on this earth to be. We're all powerful creators. And the sooner we can learn that and feel that, the better off our lives are as well. Now, really quickly, just a summary of my proactive wellness education system. Portal one is perception because uh, portal one is perception because perception drives and creates our reality. So perception is not portal three, portal five or seven is portal one for very good reason. Everything begins with the power of perception, both at the external level and more importantly, the internal level. And then I mentioned the placebo effect 2.0. Our body has an intelligence that we communicate with. So the placebo effect happens when someone takes a a sugar pill and they believe it's a pill that actually helps their body and the body begins to heal and regenerate as if they're taking a medicine but in truth it's the power of their belief so placebo effect 2.0 we don't have to trick our body there's certain things that we can do hypnosis visualization self-talk to communicate with our body to accelerate the healing or regeneration of our body portal three emotional energy so i do talk about how emotional energy is a more accurate term compared to emotions because emotional energy implies that what we feel on the inside we do broadcast and we affect the world around us people animals and even plants to varying degrees portal four is bioenergy different types of energy that flow throughout the body. I talk a lot about that. Portal five, relational energy. In every relationship, there's an energy exchange that takes place that goes beyond emotional energy. And I, I share people um, insights on how to be more proactive with relational energy instead of reactive. Portal six, environmental energy. So I do talk about uh, what to add or increase and what to reduce or eliminate in indoor air quality, as well as uh, quantum physics and the interconnected energy field that we all live in. And portal seven is nutrition and detoxification. And children can really use an education in nutrition because remember what Hippocrates said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. And I do have a dynamic smoothie recipe that's delicious and nutritious. I got Simon from Evergreen Leadership Academy to try it and um he said it was like an eight or nine out of ten so both in, in terms of taste nutrition it's 10 out of 10 so there are many possibilities that parents can do and teachers can do to uh, improve nutrition and actually make it taste good so again these are all just little samples of my proactive wellness education system and um, that concludes uh the presentation so i'll stop my share and um is there any questions comments or observations anybody wants to share maybe about the breathing experience or anything else Wow, that was that was amazing. I, I really liked the breathing. Um, what I noticed myself was I was breathing into my chest until I caught it and then went, oh, I need to breathe into my diaphragm. And I found it harder to hold my breath when I was breathing into my diaphragm. Is that unusual? Uh, you're just not used to breathing into your diaphragm. And one thing I have noticed is that with generally women, they're conditioned in society to hold in their stomach. And I had to work with some woman with hypnosis to allow themselves to properly deep breathe, to send their breath down to their stomach as well. So mm -hmm. it's an excellent observation, Norma Jean. But as time goes on, your ability to hold your breath when you do that will grow and increase just like a muscle lifts weights as well. So, yes. Yeah, very cool. Camelia. Awesome. Uh, thank you, James. This is a really great presentation. It was really interesting. Um, I uh, have this question. So you are going to make available these uh, recordings for the breathing and um, all this presentation and uh, um, on the um, education portal? Correct. Uh, yeah, I was... Um, we are talking in our committee at some point that um, this is the chance for... Um, 
parents homeschooling and for uh, learning paths to do the things that they want to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I think for the de facto school system, it's going to be a transition period. I don't know if this can be implemented from the very beginning. I do hope so. <laughs> but this is a great chance for, um, for parents homeschooling and for the learning pods. And I hope that uh, many of them will take advantage of this. Yes, thank you for sharing that. I really hope so too as well. So there's a lot of stuff I do want to share freely at no cost to parents. And like you said, breathing, if that could be one of the first things taught and uh, to children and they begin to utilize that on a daily basis, maybe multiple times a day, their willingness to learn and cooperate with their parents will go up to varying degrees, of course, depending upon the vibrations and energy of the parents as well. But this would be a great tool to help them to bridge the gap and create more cooperation uh, with their children as well. So excellent observation. Thank you for sharing. You, you are right. And I think the education has to start with parents. Yes, it does. Yeah. Parents are the primary teachers exactly. of their children exactly. and not the teachers in any, let it be private school, pod school. That's great. But the parents are the primary teachers. And often parents are too focused on their smart technology and not properly educating their children. So I'm really glad that you brought that up as well. Yeah, parents are the primary teachers of our children as well. So yeah. thank you for sharing that. Thank you. I okay. Joshua. Okay. Joshua. Hey, what's up? Thank you so much, James. Right? What? I mean, I feel like you need a new best friend because I want to hang out, man. I, I love it. You're um, I I connect with so much of it. I just taught a healing through art workshop right before it, and Excellent. we were doing processing techniques on how to release emotions. So it's been in the synergy of like my whole existence, and uh, I really love how you can you're bringing it and you're breaking it down. Like I, I appreciate the breathing and allowing us to experience it. I love how you're bringing it to the children. And I love the way that you present it with ease. It really, it really, uh, for me, I, I can feel, I, I listen to how people instruct because I love teaching. I'm infatuated with teaching and I, I've been doing it my whole life. And you do it with ease and with confidence. And at sometimes I feel like it's just like a flowing out of you and it's, uh, it's, it's a really beautiful thing to watch, and uh, all of the topics that you're talking about are fascinating. I've, I've done hypnotherapy to, to reprogram my subconscious because I was concerned with, like, I was like, I need to get rid of this self-limiting belief that just come coming up every day for, like, two years. And I went, I found through energy synergy, and I found this hypnotherapist, and boom, two weeks later, I felt like it never even existed. And I was yeah. like, what's going on? So... Uh, I can relate. I'm grateful for you and uh, it's powerful and I can't wait to see what you have to offer because I'm definitely, I want my mom to be able to experience it too. So um, thank you for your time and thank you for your share. Awesome. Thank you so much, Joshua. I look forward to connecting with you in the future too as well. Thank you so much for that positive feedback. Okay. Hi, James. Uh, just Hi. a couple questions. <laughs> um, your master of speed talking, by the way, is unparalleled. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, to that end, I have my question. Uh, that was, could you please repeat uh, of the portals, number three and four, what were those? Oh, uh, yeah, emotional energy, portal three, and portal four is bioenergy. Or bioenergy. Cool. And then uh, Stephanie had a question. So how old should children start the, the deep breathing exercises? Um, well, as soon as they understand the English language, as soon as they can understand uh, instruction, now they don't have to hold their breath at the beginning, just getting them used to deep diaphragmatic breathing and properly breathing in through the nose and sending the breath down to the stomach. As soon as they understand that, then you can start incorporating holding the breath maybe for the count of four. And then when they're, that's easy, they can move up to six. So really, like, I wish I learned this at, in junior kindergarten personally. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as long as they can understand English and, and follow instruction, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, flowing for them. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Judy. Hi. So were you saying that Wim Hof's breathing techniques, is that the same Qi Quang? I know I'm saying that wrong. <laughs> Qigong. Qigong. Some people it? pronounce it differently. There's different spellings of it as well. Now, so, so you're asking if his is the same? Yeah. Okay. Now, just so you know, uh, Qigong has over a thousand different styles. Why? Because when over the years, or over the centuries, uh, 
people learned, uh, got certified in certain forms of Qigong, and then they became creative, and they created their own form. So I created my own form of Qigong. So uh, there's different types of Qigong breathing as well. So I'd imagine that a uh, Wim Hof's breathing might fall into that category. It might not. But again, all this, it's all labels are just labels, right? They're all breathing sort of has many things in common as well. But uh, definitely Wim Hof is something to someone to investigate as well. I've looked into some of his training as well. My breathing is a little different from his because mine's more uh, counting and breathing where I've done some bre his breathing with a, 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 a a friend of mine and you do uh he guided me through uh deep slow inhale deep slow exhale then you do faster and then slow faster and slow so there's varying speeds where mine is just more of counting as well so to answer your question it might fall into the category of qigong it might not but i don't i don't encourage people to buy into labels too much just find out what works for you and then go with that ultimately yeah, i was just i had just um been introduced to him about two months ago and so i started doing it before I'm sure I'm doing it wrong, but I do it before I get out of bed for 20 minutes or whatever, right? For the last yeah. couple of months. But also I have another question about um, hypnotherapy and stuff. Um, I was just curious, like how you feel about, um, because dreaming is God speaking to us in the night hours. Um, I was wondering if it isn't almost dangerous because I've had definite warning dreams and it saved me you know, and um, so how do you, you know, taking that, I'm, I'm God governed, he's my sovereign God, and I'm God governed, versus my own taking it into my own um, control, you know what I mean, my life, in, in a sense. Yes. Okay, okay, so I know how to answer that question. So there's certain dreams that, again, our prime creator are, you know, communicates with us. So um, if it's really important, God will send that message to us. So you'll get it in the important time. Now, um, it's but there's some people that remember so many dreams of random things at night that don't really have any deep meaning. That could be, you know, um, confusing or just have no plot to them as well. I'm talking about those types of dreams that don't have a lot of meaning. Now, dreams can be prophecies. They, uh, they can be an answer to a question that we have. They could be a, a message from our creator. So there's many different... Um, reasons why we dream at night. So as long as you, like you said, you get messages through dreams, but God's not talking to you for eight hours a night while you sleep. You get the odd snippet. Is that correct, Judy? Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I, you know, I just know that he speaks that, it, especially if we can't understand things in the daytime, he tries yeah. to speak with us at night and and he will repeat himself and you know trying to get through yes exactly and again when we do dream at night or when we're sleeping at night um, we're able to get messages some people say from god some people say our guardian angel or angels or so on but yes it's definitely an opportunity for us to potentially tune into that as well so um when you have that dream where you feel that you're getting a message from your creator that's great but it's just not having so many dreams at night where you wake up feeling tired. Like when you have your dreams, Judy, do you wake up feeling tired or do you wake up feeling rested? Um, good question. There, every night is different, I would say. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it really, it really depends upon the individual ultimately. But again, remembering a dream here and there, hey, if it's important, has an important message, great, embrace it. But to have regular dreams every night over and over, we wake up feeling just so tired, it's not serving your highest good because our God, our creator wants us to be energized throughout our day and not to be drained as well. So there is a fine line to balance and dreams are a very, I mean, I could talk about that for an hour, dreams as well, right? So, I mean, we're just doing our best to summarize it, but it's an excellent question. I'm glad, glad you did bring that up, Judy. Okay, now Shelly. Yeah, I, I was just going to ask your your view on lucid dreaming. Um, mm -hmm. But one thing you just mentioned very importantly is like how you wake up from that. If you're energized and um, feeling great, then it's okay. So you kind of sort of answered, uh, you know, because you did mention at first, you know, the delta brain waves are in a deep sleep, so it's better. But um, like for me, for lucid dreaming, the most important thing, whatever you choose, is it energizing you? 
Yes. And, and making you feel, you know, great to wake up. So but you kind of answered my question. Yes. Okay. I was waiting. I'm, I'm glad you brought up lucid dreaming because that if, if you can develop that skill, that is a very powerful way to connect to your subconscious or the world of internal mm -hmm. perception as well. Mm -hmm. So it is a skill, at least I people encourage people to educate themselves on whether you choose mm -hmm. to pursue it or not. It's entirely up to you. It's a very mm -hmm. fascinating subject to say the least. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Shelly. Kamali, do you have another? Yes, I have another question. No, I just have a question. You know, you, you are talking about hypnosis to accelerate learning. Can we this, you know, how to say it, can it use like self-hypnosis? Yep. Yes, you can. So pretty much that is putting yourself into a very deep level of meditation. Where, and then you can give yourself uh, pre-programmed visualizations where you see something over and over and over again, creating your future in advance with imagination. Um, um, Albert Einstein said imagination is more important than knowledge. And a man by the name of Colin Wilson said imagination should be used not to escape but to create reality. So when you're in a very deep level of relaxation, your imagination is more potent and powerful to have an impact on your future and subconscious as well. And also what people call affirmations, I like to call conscious creation statements because you're consciously using these statements to create your future in advance. So putting yourself into that self-hypnosis realm, meditation realm, and then Say, saying to yourself something over and over and over, like what I do in the morning, I do have a ritual I do in the morning, or also what I do with my clients is I make them customized hypnosis audios where any given time of day or night, they, I, they listen to the audio and I guide them into hypnosis and I tell them what they need to hear over and over and over. It's almost like fertilizer for the seeds that I plant in our in-person or Zoom sessions as well. So yeah, self-hypnosis is another great category. I encourage everybody to at least investigate whether you want to do it or not, it's entirely up to you, but it's a great way to communicate with yourself at that deeper level. So I do encourage you to research that and learn that. Thank you, thank you. I was wondering if it would be a good idea to add it to your presentation, you know, for the education portal, but it's, oh, it's up yeah. to you if you want to do that or not. Thank well, you. One, one thing about that, <clears throat> some people judge the word hypnosis as well. So that's why it could be a trigger for some people. So sometimes I don't even use it. I say, oh, I, I you know, do guided relaxation, like potato, potato. Like <laughs> it's all about um, how you're helping someone. So someone said to me, well, it's not good to have hypnosis done by someone else because they disconnect you from your creator. And I say, well, that's interesting because what I do is I help people to reconnect with their creator and hypnosis is a tool to help them to do just that as well. So I use it for the total empowerment of the sovereign spirit that I'm working with as well to reconnect to their source as well as to the deeper levels of themselves as well. So I understand hypnosis could be a trigger word for some people, which is why I use it only under certain circumstances. So hypnosis for accelerated learning, people say, oh, how does that work as opposed to just hypnosis? So I'll, I'll feel that one out as time goes on, but that's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you, James. You're welcome. Judy, another question. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you know what your cellular age is? Well, um, okay. So one time I, I, there was a website that I went on over 10 years ago. I think it was realage.com. I don't remember. They, you ask, they ask you a bunch of questions and then they calculate it generally based upon how you answer. So like my calendar age is 42, but I do feel the reciprocal. I feel 24 in terms of my energy, my stamina, my endurance, my flexibility, my strength, my cognition. So many variables. So at best, you can really estimate it, but I can honestly say like I'm in better shape now than I was in my mid to my early 20s because since then it's been a night and day change on how I perceive myself, my body, and living holistically. Where before I, I'd eat fast food like it was going out of style, like and I smoked cigarettes back in the day. A lot of people are like you smoke cigarettes, James. I said yes, uh, the former version of myself. I since th I since then upgraded myself, so I'm operating at a higher operating system of perception now as well. So um, yeah, so that's an interesting little thing there as well. So yeah, did I answer your question? Oh, 
So how can I? Oh, well, sorry. My, so going back <laughs> to that. Yeah, it's best if you estimate it. But it's um, again, you can do the thing online or you can generally estimate it. But if you practice yoga, qigong, deep breathing, you have an education of holistic nutrition, you apply holistic nutrition into your life <clears throat> and you have an attitude of gratitude. You're consciously aware of your emotional energy. You can at least say that your cellular age is lower than your calendar age. To what degree? It's up to you as well. But it's just a general, these are just ideas that can work with. Now, and these have been proven, and this is a long conversation for another time, but cellular age and cognitive age can be reversed, especially even cellular aging. But that's a conversation for another time, like measurable changes in the body to show that it actually reversed in time. I do talk about that in my book, by the way, as well. I go into more detail about this whole three ages that we have as well. I go into much greater detail. Did I, is that good, Judy? Did I answer that okay? <laughs> I have so many more questions. <laughs> I can just drill you with questions because... I'll bet you can. <laughs> like, because um, I'm a happy person, I'm grateful, and uh, I try to stay young at heart. But after 50, I went, something just recently kind of hit me. And now my physical body, I'm like, I just want to trade it in. <laughs> Oh, I see. Okay. So if I were in your position, um, I would practice yoga and Qigong every day, but maybe five minutes each. You don't have to do a whole hour because think about this. When we're in a body and the more flexible the body feels, the younger we feel. The more rigid our body feels, the older we feel. So if we can, now yoga creates more flexibility than Qigong, which is why I do practice both of them, which is one of the reasons why I do feel a bit, lot younger than the calendar age of 42. But it, and remember too, yoga, you don't have to be flexible to practice yoga. Yoga creates flexibility regardless of how rigid or flexible your body is as well. So you begin to incorporate that into your daily life for flexibility and Qigong to create more internal energy. Um, you're going to have more energy and more flexibility as time goes on. I wouldn't expect results right away, but that is something to definitely improve uh, your uh, cellular aging and how your body feels as a whole. So I know that over the age of 40, I started doing things a little bit more because I want to stay ahead of the curve of aging. And we want to age gracefully and beautifully, of course, as well. So those are some ways that we can go about doing that too. Yeah, but sometimes there's... I'm super, super flexible. My massage therapist said that I'm more flexible than a Russian ballerina, but there's also troubles to being too flexible. And now I'm wearing this Sorolla belt around my hip so that my ligaments can heal from my too flexibility. Too much flexibility. Very good point. <laughs> okay. So you're, yeah, you're one of the few people who have that... Um, I forget what the term is as well, but hyper flexibility or so on as well. So, but in terms of what is going on with your body, um, is it aches and pains or I don't know what it is, but um, practicing Qigong will help the energy flow better through your body and can release those energy blockages. So don't look at them as aches and pains. Just look at them as temporary energy blockages. They might have built up in your body, but you have the power to release them, but it's only under certain circumstances. So the breathing and the Qigong would probably be excellent additions to what I like to say your proactive wellness portfolio. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So Norma Jean. Thank you. Um, James, can you put in the chat your uh, your YouTube channel? Because I, I was taking a peek through there the other day going, oh, wow, you got lots of great stuff in there uh, that would be helpful to us and for us to use with our kids, for those of us that are working with kids. So, oh, sure. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, well, I've been a little lazy in regards to putting up videos, but I'm going to be putting up more um, in the new, over the holidays and in the new year. But it's um, I can put it in the chat. It's ahead of the curve wellness. Okay. So uh, just one long word. Yeah, I'll put it in the chat. But I also I also had a question for you. You mentioned that um, the the hypnotizing work that you do, the hypnosis work that you do, uh, is really good for releasing anxieties. And I just wonder, it, do you work with people uh, virtually, or do you have to work with them in person? Nope, I can work with them virtually online as long as they have a headset and quietness and they have, um, they're tuned in strictly to the sound of my voice. I've worked with people who I've never met in person before and helped them out a lot as well. Okay. So yeah, so as long as again, they have a headset and they're in a quiet room and they can focus exclusively on my voice, then great things can happen from that. Okay, and one other question I had is you, you were talking about how you can do the, 
the few minutes of breathing and hypno hypnosis with the kids to make them more productive and more successful. And is that something that recording, is that something that you're going to be uploading onto the portal? Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was, that was awesome. I really enjoyed that. You're welcome. And yeah, over the holidays, I'm going to be uh, putting together all that stuff. So when the new year, it could be put up onto the portal as well. And by the way, quick announcement, everybody, as of January, I'm going to be facilitating the health and wellness think tank for Life Force Canada. Yay. That's yeah, Cecile uh, is going back to school and she's going to be working part time. And uh, she put it out there and um, I immediately uh, felt called to do it as well. So I'm going to be facilitating that as of the new year. Well, does that mean that uh, you're still going to have time to come and join us on Thursday evenings, I hope? Yes, I will. Oh. Education is important. As you said, Norma Jean, it's the foundation. Well, and it's I the think that everything builds up from education. Exactly. And I think in the future, what we want to do is also is, is invite um, other think tanks to join us on occasion too, right? So that we can start to think about how we can incorporate those pillars in our education system is something that we've talked about before so that would be a that would be great you're already on board this is awesome awesome, awesome. um well, speaking of the portal oh say sorry, sorry go ahead i just want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in tonight and, and hearing this out as well because it can only help improve quality of life in many different areas as well so it's an honor for me to be able to share some of my uh, knowledge that i've accumulated over the years yeah, thank you. And thank you for taking the time to do that. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. With that, I yield. <laughs> thank you. Um, so the portal, speaking of the portal, uh, we're, we're still on track to be launching before Christmas. So I was going to suggest that we maybe skip next week because it's the 23rd and I recognize that everybody's like super duper busy and Christmas is, you know, then, you know, <laughs> looming only in a couple of days. But um, now I'm thinking if people are available, maybe we should have it anyways, because hopefully we'll have the portal launched and we can show everyone how to, to do the, um, the form to, to do an offering or to do a search and we can maybe go through it. Um, I don't know, how does everybody feel about that? Yeah, do you wanna not meet next week or yes to meet next week? Well, I know other um, other think tanks are taking the next two weeks off. Are they? Yes. Uh, nobody told me that. <laughs> oh, well, I did. <laughs> so okay, that's so what the, both the media, at least the media think tank and the health and wellness think tank. I can't okay. say for the other ones, but they've all said to take two weeks off uh, just to, you know, because we're all dealing with the holidays plus the craziness of everything that's going on so just having a few weeks just to go within so when january comes we're fully refreshed and recharged okay well our so the next one is the 23rd the one after that is the 30th and i was thinking that um uh maybe we will do that one because because the portal will be up and running at that point it yeah will, that would be a good idea so yeah, I, yeah I, i'm with that too yeah so <laughs> I, I can we uh just take a like everybody good with taking next thursday off then yes <laughs> Okay, all right, I'll make sure I send out emails uh, just confirming that. Um, Shelly and Judy, if you wanna put your emails in the chat, then I can add you to our email list because I send out an email every week prior to our think tank, just kind of talking about what's coming up and reminding everybody, giving you the Zoom link and all that sort of jazz. Um, and, and, uh, and then, We'll take next week off. The week after when we come back together, we can also maybe talk about scheduling a time that works for uh, anybody who's interested in volunteering some hours with the portal and doing the, you know, checking over the, the submissions and stuff. Uh, we can maybe do a tutorial and record it and all that sort of jazz. Uh, what do we got? Um, Yes, and Marianne has been writing a manual for the volunteers, just so that uh, you'll, you know, anybody who volunteers, it'll they'll have a video that they can watch because we'll record our meeting, the Zoom meeting, where we go through it. But they'll also have a little manual for that. Um, just reminders for anybody new, especially if you, we have a, a blog section on the portal. First of all, Judy and Shelley, do you know about our education portal? Do you know what I'm talking about here at all? Okay, I should explain that. Please forgive me. Um, we've been working really hard to create a uh, database-backed website that's going to allow 
um, parents to connect with educators, vice versa, or parents to connect with other parents, to, uh, way to find resources if they're, you know, withdrawing their children from school and they're kind of going, ah. so um, if they're looking for camps, if they're looking for extracurricular activities, um, if they're looking for specific resources on how to teach A, B, or C, all that, uh, le learning pods, alternative schools in your area, all that. So, Parents can make, uh, can do searches for, for things and educators can post offerings. And just to be clear, you don't have to be a um, certified degree teacher. If you are a farmer and you've farmed your whole life, who better to teach our kids how to plant, sow and harvest their, their own food, that sort of thing. So uh, it's pretty exciting. And there's other components on the portal as well. Um, we have a blog section where people can write in articles for us and specifically we, we're looking for homeschoolers that can tell us about their experience, uh, good or bad, you know, what pitfalls, things that have helped them. Uh, uh, we also are looking for people to tell us about uh, programs that they've developed like James has and I have and, um, and uh, many others on the call as well. And uh, also maybe alternative pro, uh, education systems that you've heard about throughout the world globally. So there's that section on the portal and there is also a resource section. So if you are specifically looking for something, there are different, there's a, like a section for parents, a section for educators and, and uh, a place to also offer like materials, downloadable or printable ones. Marianne, am I missing anything you'd like to add? No, that was great. I just wanted to uh, ask if Judy would be interested in talking to me and I could do an article that I think sounds like you've got a lot of wisdom on how to homeschool. That's the exact kind of thing we want for our Tuesday's home, homeschooling how-to series. So if you want to, if you don't mind, I could, we can chat and I can write it up and do a little article to help other people who are starting out on homeschooling. The idea is, is to discuss a bit about your personal journey, but also tips and advice and, and really useful information for other people. Yes, and Marianne just reminded me too that it's free. This is something that we've created um, because we recognize that there were going to be a lot of parents and educators stepping away from the public school system and in, in need of support and resources. And so we're not charging anything for anybody to do searches or to offer their services. It's completely free. It's just, um, uh, we just want to serve and we're trying to save the kids, right? So, um, you know, we would love it if people spread the word too. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll put in the chat the email address, sorry, the website address. And then if you wanted to go online, you can join our email list. Right now, the site isn't quite fully functional in that you can't do searches and you can't do offerings, but everything else is uh, live and available. So the blogs you can look at, the resources that we have so far. And if you know of any resources or links or videos or articles or books or whatever, please feel free to email myself or Marianne um, and let us know about it so we can add it to the resource section as well. And um, anybody have anything to add while I'm trying to find this? email. I just wanted to say that we've recently had a lot of people asking about adult education, so we've decided to add that as an as an offering as well, seeking or offering. So yeah. that's going to whole other kettle of fish, but people seem to want it, so we'll go for it. Yeah, well, and I think we kind of recognize that there are, um, that we're going to have to re-educate parents as well, right? This is a whole kind of paradigm shift yeah. for everybody. I'm just trying to find that email. The one, uh, the one I just posted in the chat just now is our YouTube channel for our um, meetings that we hold every week here. And um, you can go back and find the last, I think there's six or seven, the last six or seven weeks. So if you've missed anything, you can, uh, you can go back and have a look. Uh, why can't I find the right? Oh, here it is. There it is. I'm just getting the portal website. My apologies for taking so long. So there you go. If you wanted to um, uh, have a look at it, can everybody see it? Oh yeah, there it is. Okay. And then you, so you can subscribe to our email list on there as well. Anyone have any questions about the portal or where we're at with that at this moment? Or 
Oh, um, really quickly, uh, you know, some uh, who said that the some adults want education on there as well. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll put up some of the stuff about my uh, proactive wellness education system and the seven portals as well. That's up on perfect. There. Yeah. yeah, I think I think we're going to see a lot of adults looking for some help and support. So sure. that's perfect. Yeah, excellent. Shelley. Yeah, I, I'm just grateful you brought that up because that, that's just one thing that I really uh, do often is work with, with uh, parents and families one-on-one, -on -one, just helping them understand dynamics. Right, like um, the education system? Uh, yeah, or just educating them on just their relationships, you know, to understand what's going on as people come into... Life. knowing themselves in this way right yeah yeah great yeah. well and that's yeah, definitely and an offering that you can make on the portal yeah yeah that's I'll figure out a way how to do that once well, i take a look at it it looks very you won't you won't be able to do do the offering yet that's the yeah, part that's not functional and it's not it's not complicated yeah. you just it's yeah. like fill out the, the form the questions and it's uh it's actually pretty pretty easy yeah for now, I can share with a lot of the homeschooling parents that I've met, that I've learned from, that have been homeschooling for like years. I learned so much for them. So I'll direct them over here yeah. because I learned a lot from them. Like you said, what works, what doesn't work. And, uh, you know, I met with a whole bunch of groups over the past year. And it's just incredible the, the now we can connect them into some place. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah, I word. think they would really like this and, and like to share. Marianne. For sure. It's easier just to raise my hand, my real hand, instead of using <laughs> the button there. Where's that button? <laughs> you know what else I'd really like to know is what forums that you, and groups you belong to so that we can kind of get in that loop as well. If you wouldn't mind sharing how you know these homeschoolers, that'd be great. Oh, okay. Yeah, at first it was just uh, asking around and then there's some Facebook groups, you know, and I just visited each of them till I found a fit. Some of them just dealt with all the little kids and I was looking for one more with my 12 year old, but that's even hard because they didn't really want to meet at parks that, you know, that age was a little harder. So what we found works, if you want me to share one thing is, uh, for example, I have a friend who owned a horse farm. It's just therapeutic uh, work. And so we just got 10 kids together and we did a three hour workshop. So that brought the, that age group together. And so we just started doing things like that, a cooking class, you know, archery class. So we just found that's the way to get that age group together. Uh, so that was something I learned. Um, and then each parent took a turn, you know, like uh, Norma, what you said, like a farmer, that's what they do. So much better to learn from them. And that's like my friend who, is works with horses that's her love her life and then you could just see the kids just take it on you know her love and just it was such a beautiful uh experience for the kids when you're learning from somebody who's teaching from experience not from like a book yeah and absolutely. just find people's specialty and they love to share it right because it's what they love especially retired people so and we're still new in that like I'm still new meeting these groups so we're finding people that are retired or had to quit but they still love what they do and teaching kids like if they have an interest gives them meaning again I think you just have to bring those people together yeah I think it's a new direction that education is going to go in yeah. as well is that you know not necessarily teachers it's just like yeah people that are experienced sharing their knowledge right, right? i think that's you're right that passion thing. that people have is is uh you know you can feel it right yeah 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 well i wanted to wish you guys all a very merry christmas and a happy holiday season whatever it is you celebrate i hope you have uh lots of downtime and and good family time with family and friends and yes exactly yes and 
thank you. Uh, thank you for, sh for showing up every week, every, every week, you guys, because uh, this is like the highlight of my week. <laughs> so Merry Christmas, everyone. And James, again, thanks so much. That was awesome. Yeah, it was really great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thanks, guys. Good night. Thanks, Thank you. Good night. Good night. That was awesome. Yeah. That was so awesome. Good night. Good night, Good night. everyone. Bye-bye.